Part two, y'all. Site Perspectives GeoFucks. And we talking about black, gay, queer men who only date white men or have a preference for non-black men or light-skinned black men. And then also just talking about preferences and, you know, different perspectives among this, this topic. Uh, brought to you by Twitter, X, and just like I keep seeing these same conversations. So, and also shout out to Say So TV, shout out to Leah Bad, shout out to Don, shout out to Renee. There's so many people I want to give shout outs to, and I would love to do a podcast or commentary or just chop it up with y'all, because we all talk about the same things or things that are similar, but we talk about it from our individual perspectives and mindsets and opinions and experiences. So it's really unique and cool to me to see that. But anyways, um, part two, medicinal Don, what up, what up? AKA unreal world. So, um, part two, It hurts when you're not that person's, you know, preference. And I'm a firm believer in go where you are celebrated, not where you are tolerated. And this is where nuances enters the chat. Now, this is what gets me about black gay men. Um, and I'm just going to call a thing a thing. What gets me about black gay cis men, black bi cis men, black queer cis men Black, cisgendered, LGBTQ+, plus, queer, gay, etc. men. Is y'all have very high expectations and standards for who you're going to want to date and not date. And then y'all have levels to it. You know what I'm saying? And everybody does. Let's just be honest. Regardless of sexuality, race, identity, gender, etc. Everybody groups have different standards and expectations but what gets me in pertaining to this conversation these are the same black men that you know feel entitled to other black men and that's who they're going to date and that's who they're going to be with and at the same time you're you're disregarding black gay and queer lgbtq men in the community that would be with you if you weren't disregarding them, right? And this is what I mean by your preferences don't even be wanting y'all. And that's what's hilarious, right? Because you're quick to tell, remember this, right? Oh, they only want to date white folks or they only want to date this and they only want to date and there's always the big argument on there, always interracial dating, interracial dating, they're dating a white man. Or they're dating, uh, you know, a non-black person, another person of color, but they're non-black, right? And it's like, people go where they're celebrated, not where they're tolerated. And I'm going to keep saying that because that's another perspective, is the fact that y'all be sitting up uh, doing the same thing that y'all don't want people to do to you. And that's what all of us are doing. You know, people want love, but they don't want to give love. People want respect, but they don't want to give respect. So what I mean by that is y'all got these expectations and standards. I mean, literally... Um, number one, a person got to be six feet tall. Um, they got to be masculine. And what is masculine, right? Because in my opinion, a lot of times the masculinity that y'all want is toxic masculinity. Um, or it's a very, if it's not toxic masculinity, it's a very narrow lens of task uh, of masculinity. And then you don't give other people chances because they're not that type of masculine so in other words let's keep it real there's a nice portion of y'all where if a person isn't giving heterosexual straight 
you know, uh, DL, like literally you have gay, black, queer men, s cis men in particular, who fetishize the down low men, the men that are living double and quadruple lives, the men that are ashamed of themselves and afraid of other people's judgment on their sexuality, on what they're attracted to, who they are. And again, homophobia and transphobia and biphobia constantly play a role in this anti-blackness, white supremacy, um, you know, racism, et cetera, misogyny. It constantly plays a role in why we do the things we do because we are products of our environments. And yeah. And um, again, you want the one that he get down, but he don't look like he get down because there's this assumption that there is a look to being gay versus a look to being heterosexual. And there's a look to being a macho, masculine, manly man versus the assumption that any man that's gay or queer is going to be weak. And the reason why we view them as being weak is through a very misogynistic, patriarchal lens because we're viewing a man that shows love and emotion and compassion, someone as being feminine. And then we're looking at femininity as being less than masculinity. And we're looking at femininity being weak and pathetic. And then, but in the same breath, nobody wants, no, uh, they always want to go and date white men or they go, okay, the feminine gay men, queer men, why should they stick around talking to people that don't want them? And I'm not saying that this is all black, gay, cis men or black, gay, queer men. But we have to be real. There is a nice population in the community that are like that. They don't want to date feminine people. They don't like femmes. Um, you know, and then so you have some of the feminine men who are like, OK, cool. I get it. I'm not your preference. I'm going to go over here and talk to somebody that is and. It's wild because, again, a lot of this is built out of, again, white supremacy being this overarching, oppressive, you know, uh, puppet master. And then outside, the puppet is controlling. The master is controlling the puppet. And then the puppet is the homophobia, <laughs> the sexism, the misogyny, the patriarchy, the anti-blackness, the racism. And then we're just all down here getting stumped out by oppression. <laughs> um, but so it's odd, right? Because in the same breath, it does seem like white people are more accepting of homosexuality, bisexuality, um, uh, transgender people, feminine people. I mean, shit. When you look at a lot of white cis men, they're allowed to be feminine. They're allowed to be masculine. They're allowed to be whatever the fuck they want to be within reason. Because they also still deal with homophobia, transphobia, biphobia, obviously, right? But it seems like in the black community, it's been ingrained that you're not supposed to be gay. You're not, And mind you, it's been ingrained to everybody, right? Because... Christianity, religion is constantly force fed to everybody. Let's be real. Did you actually choose it or was it already indoctrinated to you? You came into a family. I was born into a family that is very much Christian Protestant, but they're also African American black people. So they're Christian, but they are Kojic, Church of God. In Christ. Now let me tell you. You already know how it is. Baby boomers from the South. Listen. You in the Midwest because they migrated to the South. You in the Northeast. What have you. You already know. 
you're not supposed to be gay, bi, trans. You're not supposed to be in the Kojic church. People wearing the jean skirts that go all the way to the bottom of your ankles or right over your ankles. And you better have on some socks covering up your ankles. Like, you're literally, and that's for all the women and the girls and the people who were assigned female at birth or born intersex and raised as a girl. That's what you're de dealing with. So, like, literally, you're being told anything feminine, especially for black cis men, that's weak, that's pathetic, that's bitch shit, that's the F-A-G-G-O-T shit. You know what I mean? You a punk, you a sissy. All of these things is what's being told to you. And then you have people who are naturally feminine that's just who they are or they lean more into their feminine energy and they get treated and chastised like shit and again remember there's a nice portion in the black cis gay queer community i don't like femmes and will have no femmes in their shit so again when that feminine guy goes off and is talking to somebody and they just happen to be white because for some reason i don't know what it is I have theories and thoughts, but obviously I don't know everything. I, mean, I don't claim to know everything. Again, this is my perspective, my opinion, backed with some data. But at the end of the day, I don't know everything. Um, But yeah, so they go to the white dude. White dude is accepting. White dude doesn't mind that he that he likes to that he's naturally feminine and that he leans into his feminine energy or that he likes to wear makeup and wants to wear his, get his nails done and have extensions and may dress up in what is perceived to be feminine clothing, perceived to be women's clothing. And, but yet he still identifies as a cis gay queer man. And there's nothing wrong with him being a feminine, cis, gay, queer man. There's nothing wrong with a feminine man being heterosexual, being straight, being bi, being pan, being themselves and existing. But we've been taught that that is not how things are supposed to be. So therefore, we can't be attracted to that. Even though there are black, cis, gay, and queer men that are very much attracted to feminine, gay, queer men. And again, a lot of this, in my opinion, is also we do, and I'm, and I'm including myself, we spend too much time on the internet. Because literally, you know how we all can get. Some of us can get. We will literally sit up, oh, they don't like feminine men. Oh, too many feminines. Oh, we need more masculinity. Oh, ain't nobody attracted to that. But then in real life, in your real everyday life, some of us already know. Feminine, gay, queer men have boyfriends, husbands. Feminine, cis men have girlfriends, wives, have children, have families. And or... Constantly got people in their inboxes trying to get on. Rather that sexually or flirting with them or whatever. So we know in real life, this whole idea that nobody likes feminine men <laughs> is bullshit. Okay. But of course you get on social media, you get on the internet, you have a very, yes, it's the world wide web, but every human being is not using the internet, is not using social media, is not using the social media that you use. And even if they are using the social media that you use, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be following them and seeing their opinions and, and what, they're, what they think and what they actually are attracted to and who they're actually with and who they love. So it's like we get very small. If we're looking at it from a macro lens, in my opinion, the internet is a very small portion of people and yet because it's a small portion and you're on there and you keep seeing the same shit because of the algorithm and everybody's talking about the same shit because everybody want to go viral everybody got to copy and paste you get bombarded with shit 
And it makes it seem like that's what everybody think and that's what everybody want and that's what everybody own. And that's not necessarily the case. Anyways, part three is coming up.